morning, everybody. Welcome to Lower United Methodist Church in this beautiful weekend in which we celebrate the 4th of July. We are excited and delighted to have worship with you at a distance, wherever you are. Benjamin Garner will provide the music and Julie will help us with the scripture. And as we get ready to worship the Lord, let us center our hearts. Let us quiet our souls. Let us begin to listen to the Lord. And as you listen to the music, let us worship the Lord. we see unfolding around us. We are divided by ideologies and beliefs. We know that the best thing for us to do is to pray for wisdom, for justice, and for peace. We know the best source of strength is the Word of God. Today, as we worship God, let us all together pray for our nation. Join me in the call to worship if you have it. We gather to worship and pray for our nation. We pray for justice and for peace. We pray for wisdom for the leaders of our nation. We pray for courage to choose the right path. We pray for the spiritual leaders in our nation. May they hear God's voice and follow God's heart. We pray for all who truly love God and others. May they be inspired and encouraged to change the world. Join me in the opening prayer. As we face these uncertain times in our nations and the world, we ask you, Lord, to dwell among us. We trust our nation to your loving care. Send your spirit to touch the hearts of all of our leaders. Give them the wisdom to know what is right and the courage to do it. Give us your light and your truth. 
guide us in your ways so that we may seek your will and bless the world around us. Amen. us to guide us our God with us joining ordaining maintaining his kingdom divine so from the beginning the fight we were winning thou Lord wast at our side all glory be thine we all do extol thee thou triumphant and pray that thou still our defender wilt be let thy congregation escape tribulation thy name be ever praised O Lord make us free Today, I invite you to pray, to pray for all the concerns that we have in our hearts and with gratitude for the blessings that the Lord has poured over us every morning. He sent his blessings and every night his presence is with us. Are there reasons for us to pray? Are there joys in our heart? I ask you to center on those things and as we're praying, let the Holy Spirit guide your thoughts and your mind let us pray for our people and our nation oh god our lord here we are in your presence united in one thought on your will praying for our nation praying for our people praying for our communities praying for our leaders oh lord we trust you you are the creator you are a rock, a redeemer. We ask, O Lord, that you bless your nation with your spirit of peace, with your spirit of truth, with your strength from heaven, your wisdom, Lord. We pray for every authority in every community, all up to the higher levels. We pray, O Lord, for every authority, for everyone who's making decisions, to bless this, your nation. Lord, there are many things that are not right. There are many things that oppress our hearts. When we see what is happening all over our nation, oh Lord, sometimes our hearts get sad, crushed by indifference or anger, misbehavior, difficult words, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy on our nation. Send your spirit of truth to every heart. Send your spirit of wisdom. Send your healing touch, Lord. Bring healing to your nation. Bring healing from every virus. Bring healing from our attitudes. Bring healing to our spirits. Bring healing, O oh Lord. Send your Holy Spirit, because we know you will always listen, and only you have the power to bless. We pray in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth, as it is in heaven, 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us, Lord, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The scripture reading this morning comes from James chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. If any of you are suffering, they should pray. If any of you are happy, they should sing. If any of you are sick, they should call for the elders of the church, and the elders should pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. Prayer that comes from faith will heal the sick, for the Lord will restore them to health. And if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. For this reason, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful in what it can achieve. country tears of the sweet land of liberty of thee I sing land where my fathers died land of the pilgrims pride from every mountain side let freedom ring my native country the land of the noble free thy name i love i love thy rocks and rills thy woods and templed hills my heart with rapture thrills like that above let music swell the breeze and ring from all the trees sweet freedom song let mortal tongues awake let all that breathe partake let rocks their silence break the sound prolong our fathers god to the author of liberty to thee we sing long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light protect us by thy might great god our king great god our king Join me now in the prayer of confession. Lord, we find ourselves giving way to the stress that these troubled times bring to our lives. Harsh words spoken, friendships broken. We choose sides and draw lines. It gets harder to forgive and keep moving forward. Forgive us, Lord, we pray. Help us, Lord come together as one, unified and strong. Fill our hearts with compassion so we may love the way you want us to love. Amen. God's eternal love endures forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The text is from 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. First of all, then, I ask that requests, prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving 
be made for all people. Pray for kings and everyone who is in authority so that we can live a quiet and peaceful life in complete godliness and dignity. This is right and it pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. First of all, I ask that everyone plays. This is Paul writing for Timothy. As he's giving him instructions to lead this congregation, he starts from the beginning, prayer. We know that prayer is always the first step because prayer calms our hearts, center us to listen, and always move us to action. Yes, prayer always move us to action. That is why we start with prayer. Before we speak, before we move, before we go, we pray. And we listen to the Holy Spirit so our minds are centered in God's will. Then we know where we are called to serve. First of all, I ask that prayers and petitions and requests and thanksgiving giving be given for all people. He's very clear. We sometimes pray for the people that we like, the people that we love, which is good. I mean, I pray for my daughters, but we also need to pray for everyone else, even people that we don't know, even situations that we just don't understand, even communities that we don't know why they behave the way they do. We pray for all people around the world, whether they speak our language or not, whether they eat our food or not, whether they live in situations that we don't even know, we pray and we trust because the power of the Holy Spirit that moves around the world, the word that the Lord created, have mercy and compassion even when we don't we pray, we pray intentionally, we pray with decision, we pray trusting that the Lord actually really listen to our voice when we pray, even when we do it with our hearts quietly. At home, he listens, and as a whisper, he speaks to us. As a whisper from heaven, he guides our thoughts and our minds. Our hearts begin to see and to understand where is God sending us to serve. It is to prayer as we listen to God speaking to us that we begin to see with clarity and understanding where does he want us to serve. As we look at the word and sometimes get confused by so much information and so much chaos, we center and we pray and we let the Holy Spirit guide us and tell us where he wants us to go and serve. And he will. He will speak to our hearts if we're paying attention. He will speak to our souls and guide us. He will give us the promptings for us to know, oh, the Lord is in this. I better get ready. I better get moving. I better get going. Because when the Lord calls, I want to be there. Because there will be blessing. When the Lord sends us, I want to be there. Because the blessing of the Lord always comes down. When he sends us, we go. When we send us, we go trusting on that blessing, trusting on that love, trusting on the power of the Holy Spirit. I ask first of all that everybody prays, prayers, requests, petitions for every single person in the world. And then he says for all authorities, smart guy. I imagine that at that time, just like now, 
people might be complaining. It, it happens. Political situations come. People are not happy with whoever is leading them. And all of the levels of our nation and the world, always there is someone always complaining. So he, he doesn't, he's not going to take that. If you're praying, if you trust that the Lord is listening, if you actually believe that the Holy Spirit is in action moving you to serve, pray for every authority whether you like them or not. See, there are authorities that you might like in your community, in the government, in the federal government, or around the world. There are people that you feel more affinity to. You pray. Pray for wisdom. Pray for the Lord to use them. Pray for the Lord to reveal the, them how to better serve the people. But there are those there are those in authority that we just don't like. We just don't understand them. Might be around in your community or your county. Might be in a different state. Might be in another part of the world. But there are people in authority that we just don't like. I get that. He still asks us to pray. He asks us to pray for wisdom. He asks us to pray for his spirit. Now you might say, well, what if they're not Christians? Does that helper have stopped God from blessing his people, from touching their hearts, from making their hearts the stone in hearts that can understand and want to bless? Remember the Pharaoh in Egypt, how much the people prayed. And as strong as he was, the spirit moved and let them go, but he did change around and decided to do his will. There are people like that, authorities like that, that they just want to do things that are not according to God's will. So what do we do? Sit in the corner and talk and complain? Or do we pray? See, because when we pray, it moves us to action. When we pray, it brings clarity to our mind. When we pray, it is our heart that is changed. So we have the best attitude to go out and do whatever we can to bless the people. It doesn't matter who's in authority. We pray for them intentionally. So like the Holy Spirit turns around their hearts and help them come to understanding. There are parts of the world that we worry about. Wars, conflicts. Actually, even in our own families, these dynamics happen. It could be in our own community. You have noticed that there might be conflict. Do not let that discourage you. Do not let what you see or what you hear trouble your heart. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You stand on the rock. You stand with the Redeemer, the one that has the power to bless. You keep on praying and moving in the promptings of the Spirit. Let the Spirit fill your heart and send you with his word to bless the world. Pray for the authorities because this pleases God. So we can live in peace, in godliness. We pray for one another. We pray for everyone in the world. We pray, as James says, the prayer of the righteous is powerful. We know that the prayer of the righteous is powerful powerful. And that, that part of James, when he writes about prayer for those who are sick, bring the elders and pray for them. He asks us to pray. We are surrounded by a virus that we cannot see, that we don't understand, aggressive, getting into every community, and we get concerned about the situation of this pandemic. 
But he doesn't say, oh no, let's go in the corner. He said, pray. Are they people who are sick? You pray for mercy and compassion. We take things seriously. We wash our hands, we use our masks, we follow rules, but in the midst of everything we know that God has the power to bless, to give wisdom to those who are working hard to eliminate this pandemic, to find new ways, to, to find a vaccine, those who, who are serving, those who are in intensive care units. There are so many people blessing others. We pray for them and we trust in God. And sometimes he answers in, in ways we don't imagine. When I was, when I was a teenager, we, we had a, uh, a service for healing. And uh, the, the, the preacher came and he talked about healing and then he has the, and, and kind of like an altar call. I mean, it was a Methodist church. He invited everyone who wanted to be uh, prayed for. And they give us all in our hands, and they have chosen me. I was, you know, they always have to choose a youth, and that was the the token youth to pray for, um, for for others. And uh, and I remember as we were there, uh, the father of my best friend came forward. Now he has one of those diseases that cannot be healed according to human. And as he came, he has been suffering for years. And he comes and he stands right in front of me. So the reaction of the rest of the people, as they told me later, oh, we thought Ileana is in trouble because that cannot be healed. Well, if you don't believe, you know. He came because he loved me as a daughter. I have been friends with his real daughter for years. That was the house that I would go every Sunday to eat lasagna with them. He came to me because he loved. There are people who come to us because for some reason they love us. And we see an opportunity for us to pray. So as I put my hands on him and pray, oh, I sense the Holy Spirit and I pray for what the Holy Spirit was telling me. And he went. Later he told me, I am so glad you prayed for me. There were things in my life that were healed. Now, the, 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 the problem that he has, the health concern that he has, that was the only thing everybody else was thinking, that, that didn't change, but he was healed. I remember when he looked at me and said, thank you for that prayer. Things in my life were healed. I am at peace. We pray. We pray. Because even when we don't know the hearts of others, the Holy Spirit does know. And the Holy Spirit has the power to bless. So we commit to pray and to trust and to believe. It will be better if we say, Lord, take away the coronavirus, but that might not be God's way. But we still pray, and we still trust, and we still pray for the whole world, the authorities making decisions, and for everyone else. The prayer of the righteous is powerful. And one more thing, when we look and that text in James, you might have noticed that he talks about forgiving sins. Those who we pray for, if they have sinned, it says, they will be forgiven. Therefore, I ask you to confess to each other your sins so you will be forgiven. And then it says, the prayer of the righteous is powerful. You see the connection? We remember the end of the sentence and we forget that first we need to confess 
be forgiven, and then pray as the righteous do. First time I heard that concept, we were in an auditorium full of Methodist pastors of Virginia, and the preacher is preaching then, and he challenged us, all of us pastors, to confess our sins to each other so we can be forgiven as the leaders of the church. You know, when you pray for authorities, one of the authorities you need to remember is your pastors. Whether you like them or not, whether they're behaving or not, whether you get irritated and annoyed by them or not, you pray for your pastors, for the responsibility that is on their shoulders, especially at this time, trying to serve a church we cannot see, trying to preach to a church we can touch, trying to express our love to people when we cannot reach out to them like before you pray for your pastors as they're making decisions, as they're trying to reach out in love to bless. And that day, the preacher challenged us, confess first your sins to one another. It is an easy thing to just in your quiet time to confess to the Lord. But when you have to confess to someone else, it is tough. Now imagine these 300 pastors in that auditorium listening to this. And our hearts were troubled. <laughs> and then when anyway, he said, come to the altar of the Lord. And I remember like a spring I stood up and I began to walk down the auditorium. Well, I'm a sinner. I need that blessing from the Lord. Lord, when he calls, I come. And all the pastors begin to come. Every single one of them. And we begin to pray together for one another. And we begin to cry in the altar. Some of us on our knees, some others standing up, putting their hands on our shoulders. People begin to cry. People begin to hug each other. People begin to pray for each other. We pray for forgiveness. We prayed for mercy. We prayed for wisdom. We pray for this enormous responsibility that is to lead the people of God that sometimes crushes our heart when we feel insecure, when we feel we cannot do it, when we lose hope, we pray, Lord, have mercy, because your congregation needs a leader. Make us the leaders you want us to be. And we pray together. And we were forgiven. And I will never forget that experience. So when the scripture tells us to forgive, to confess to one another, it's not for us to get scared. It's not for judgment. It's not for someone to tell us. We already know there are things in our life we need to change. It's that when we are with each other and we set as we in, on our knees for forgiveness, the spirit moves. And he forgives, and he takes away, and he brings us together as one. It's always for us to be one, always for us to be blessed. So commit to pray. The prayer of the righteous, the prayer of the righteous is powerful. It always moves us in the right direction. It always transforms the heart. Therefore, go, pray. God bless you. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grey. For purple mountain majesty above the fruited plain, 
benediction we go in Jesus name to make a difference in our world the Spirit of God will guide us we go to offer a word of hope and the joy of the Lord the presence of our God will sustain us we go into the world to share God's love and the power of God's love will transform the hearts go in the name of Jesus to bless the world. May the presence of the living God bless you today and forevermore. Amen.